Hello and welcome to our next reflection on the Catechism. Uh, today we focus on the relationship um, between each of the three persons of the Holy Trinity and the liturgy. Uh, what can we attribute uh, to each of those persons of the Trinity in terms of our celebrations in Church? Uh, we know that from the time of Pentecost a new era has dawned, a new era during which Christ makes present, uh, he manifests and communicates his work of salvation through the liturgy. It is Christ himself who is working through the sacraments of the Church. So what can we say about each of those persons of the Trinity? Uh, well, we know that God the Father is the source of every good, of every blessing that we receive. And we have been blessed in many ways. Everything that we enjoy, uh, this primarily his ascending of his Son to us. He is speaking this word of God, uh, addressing him to us. And he speaks the word of life. It's not a word of judgment or condemnation. It is a word of life that tries to wake us up, uh, that binds up our wounds that heals, that brings with it eternal life. And this word in, becomes incarnate, and this is the Father's will, uh, so that this word will be accessible to us, will be uh, easy to understand. There will be no more distance between God and us. No more barrier. And it is God who overcomes that distance. And so we have been richly blessed uh, because of the Father's will for us, the Father who desires us to live and not to die. And so, as we have been blessed by God, in turn the Church, and often at midday prayer that we celebrate in the Church, we finish it by saying, let us bless the Lord. Uh, Often when we think of being blessed, we think, well, God is blessing us, so what does it mean to bless God in our turn? It simply means that we adore, that we surrender ourselves to our Creator in thanksgiving. Uh, this is what it means. This is the response of the creature who has been so richly blessed by God. And so what we do during the liturgy, during each liturgical celebration, uh, is we receive from God. We are celebrating what we have received from the Father. Uh, and we respond to that gift. And the response has to be surrender. It has to be praise. It has to be thanksgiving. Uh, there is no other response that the Lord is asking of us. He wants us to rejoice in what he is giving to us. And uh, how do we respond? How do we know what he has given us? Well, I mentioned uh, primarily the gift of his son. Uh, but remember, he has given us the law and that guides us in our actions. He has sent his prophets to us. So we have all these prophetic writings as well. Uh, and we pray the Psalms. We pray the Psalms uh, because we use the word of God to help us pray, to help us express uh, all that gratitude and so many other things besides in our prayer to the Lord. So we respond with his very words. We use God's own word to respond to his gifts and to his blessings for us. Uh, Jesus, as we know, is acting now through the sacraments to give us his grace. Uh, and that's the beauty, that's the treasure of the sacraments of the Church. Uh, whenever we celebrate a baptism, it is not the priest or the deacon who may be baptizing in the Church, it is Christ himself who baptizes. Uh, whenever we hear the words of absolution in the confessional, it is not the priest who absolves you from your sins, it is Christ himself who forgives you your sins. And so by his power, he is present in the sacraments. 
Uh, and in that sense, we are participating in the heavenly liturgy. Because as we know, Christ ascended into heaven, but he is here. He is with us at each and every celebration. Uh, and why did he entrust this uh, to his church? Remember, he gave the Holy Spirit to his apostles. And part of that mission, uh, part of the gifts that he entrusted to the apostles when he sent the Holy Spirit into their hearts, was the power of sanctifying others. Uh, because that's what we do, that's what we receive primarily uh, when we take part, remember, conscious, active part in the celebration. We become sanctified. And so the church is a place we come here to be sanctified. We come here to be transformed by the power of the Lord and by his very presence that is there in every single celebration of the liturgy and most of all in the celebration uh, of the sacraments. And so we receive holiness. We become like he is. And that's the beautiful exchange. Uh, all that the Lord is asking us to do is to receive. Come. Receive. This is my gift for you. Uh, and because this gift is so powerful and changes our lives so much, we our responses, as I mentioned already, with reference to the Father, is to give thanks, is to praise, is to adore. Uh, but that's the challenge for us. That's the invitation. Uh, to be open to receive. Because it's nothing about gaining anything here. It's all about being able to receive what is offered to us. And when we talk about the person of the Holy Spirit, we are talking about the one who is preparing us uh, to receive. He is preparing us to receive Christ into our hearts. It is the Holy Spirit who is ensuring that we are well disposed before each of those celebrations that we actually come prepared for this moment, that we take seriously to heart what does it mean for me to be ready to receive all these gifts from God and his blessings. And so the Holy Spirit is the one who opens our hearts. He opens our minds. So we come to understand the word of God more deeply so that our faith is nourished through that word so that we don't just sit there and observe things happening as though we played no part in any of the celebrations. No, we take an active part. Uh, and that active part comes from our understanding of what is taking place. Uh, and that's where the Holy Spirit uh, is playing his role in our celebration of the liturgy. He is enabling us through his gift through the gift of wisdom, through the gift of understanding, through the gifts of knowledge and so on, uh, to help us play an active role in what we are doing in church. He makes, the pre he makes present the mystery of Christ, especially uh, during the Eucharist, the moment of Epiclesis, uh, when we invoke the Holy Spirit upon the gifts of bread and wine, to transform them into the body and blood of Christ. Uh, and we know that at that moment what happens is what happened at the Incarnation. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit, it is through his overshadowing that these things take place. Just as Christ was born through that power of the Spirit, uh, so we can then receive the body and blood of Christ through the power of the same Spirit. And so we are enabled to enter into a communion of life uh, with the Holy Trinity itself. Uh, and so this is all that's taking place uh, during each liturgical celebration. That is why they are so important uh, to our daily life to help us enter more deeply uh, into all that is taking place. And just when you think about it, 
uh, how amazing it is what we are celebrating. On the outside is very simple. Uh, the danger is it might become monotonous for us because we know the steps along the way. We know what prayers follow which prayers. Uh, but there's nothing simple or straightforward about any of those celebrations. They are participating in the life of heaven where we surround the throne of God, we surround the Lamb of God. Uh, and that's what happens to us in the liturgy. So let's treasure, let's thank God today for all these beautiful, wonderful celebrations uh, that we can take part in freely. All we need to do is to come with an open heart and be ready to receive. That's the only obligation we have. Open heart with faith, ready to receive what the Lord has prepared for me. God bless.